Okay, welcome back to another episode. In today's episode, I'm gonna be taking a look at this NES I have in parts. Now this NES and these parts came in a lot of other various things, and I suspect that they took this apart because something simple was wrong and they didn't understand what was wrong, and I'm gonna try to troubleshoot it. Now the first thing I notice is this connector here for the first controller port. One of the pins on the very left is bent at an angle, so I can't actually fit this plug in. So I'm going to try to reshape that pin and bend it back into position. Now right here I tried to get as close of a shot as I could and it seems to be out of focus. I apologize for that, but I still think you can see what I'm doing here. So after I realign that pin, this plug fits in. So after I connect everything up, I'm getting power and it's not flashing, but I still can't get anything on the screen. Now this could be a poor connection from the 72 pin connector and the cartridge to the board because if I rest my arm on this cartridge uh, on the cartridge it does actually give me something so it, as you can see I lay a weight on top of it and I do get an image and I do get sound everything's working so I, I suspect that this could be either a dirty pin connector or a dirty edge connector so I'll just clean both and see what I get So first things first, I'm going to use some Brasso to clean up these pins on this edge connector here. And I'm going to use a liberal amount to really get a good polish on these pins. So after the Brasso I'll follow it up with some 99% alcohol just to clean up any residue and to polish it up a little bit more. And of course I'll do the same for the underside. So after I'm done with the edge connector, I'm going to focus over to the 72 pin connector. And now I can't get in here with Brasso, but I can get in here with 99% alcohol and a toothbrush. And I'm just going to scrub any carbon, any corrosion, anything that could have built up against these pins to uh, create a, a, a poor connection. And I notice as soon as I'm cleaning that a couple of these pins are bent upwards. So I don't know what could have caused this. I don't think my toothbrush caused this. But I'm just going to try to reseat these pins as best as I can and test it to see if this helps. It's not the prettiest job in the world, but it, it should work. So I'm going to just finish it off, continue with the toothbrush and alcohol, and then I'll focus my attention to the top lid. Now the top lid was missing a door lid, but I have plenty of door lids. I can find one in the parts bin, but I noticed that it has this big uh, gouge or big crack in the plastic on the top of this unit. And so I'm going to use a hot air rework station to try to re uh, melt the plastic back into shape and per perhaps even uh, 
close the hole here but um, I did get it to look better but then I used too much time and too much heat that it actually started to shrink the plastic now the prop the properties of plastic they tend to shrink and space out if you apply heat to them and warp of course um, so I, I should have just quit while I was ahead but I continued on and I actually made made the hole bigger so just keep that in mind So after I follow it up with some alcohol, and this is the end result, doesn't look too bad. NESs are fairly common, I just didn't want to throw out the top shell just for a little crack. I figured I can um, try something new, see if it works. And I did learn that you can use a little bit of heat, not too much. And then just to fast forward, I, I just clean up a little bit more parts here and reassemble the top lid off camera. Um, they're fairly simple to reassemble, they're not difficult. So. Um, Here's everything connected up without the top shell, and it seems to be working. So this unit never really was busted. Now here's a little bonus here. Um, I do have this cartridge cleaning device. It's made by 1UP, and uh, it, I don't like it too much. It, it deteriorated for me a after a couple of uses. So I, I previously did open this just to take this little plastic pad that sit, sits around this plastic divisor here. So now there, this is just a plastic divisor, but I have an idea of what I'm going to do to salvage this 1UP device. So I got this microfiber cloth, and I'm going to wrap it around, and then I'm going to sew it. I tried to staple it, but the microfiber cloth is quite tough, so I had to actually sew it to create a whole new cleaning surface. As you can see it's sewn now, sewn shut tight, so I did this off camera just to save some time. Um, this is not a sewing channel, this is an electronics repair channel, so uh, I, don't, <laughs> I can't really teach sewing. So now with everything reassembled, I'm going to try to see if this thing works. So I'm going to do it like normal, insert it and take it out, insert it, take it out, and see if it yields any good results. So here's the unit fully assembled. I cleaned it as best I could, and I added a new door lid to it. Um, it's a little bit yellow. I can do much about that. So I'm going to just test it here with Super Mario Bros. 3, and it works. So. This unit had nothing wrong with it, it was just dirty and they disassembled it for whatever reason. So I got this NES game in the mail and it was listed as faulty so I got it for relatively cheap and let's see if I can get it to work. First thing I notice is there's something rattling inside, so that's not good. Before I even disassemble or clean anything, I'm going to try to see if it is working or not. And as you can see, I can get a solid light and a solid white screen, but I can't get any picture. So let me disassemble it and clean it and see what's going on here. So 
So after removing the lid here, I see what was rattling inside is the two posts that hold the PCB board in place and keep it from shifting. So I can always glue that back, but I'm going to focus on the PCB board first. Upon close inspection, yeah, these pins are kind of dirty. So I'm going to clean these pins up and see if I can get anything out of it. So one more thing, this capacitor here in the corner, now usually these board capacitors don't go bad, but I'm going to replace it because this one looks like it burst, or either that or water got into this cartridge and corroded it. So I'm going to put a new capacitor and see if that helps the problem. So first things first, I'm going to clean the corrosion off the board and clean these pins here with some alcohol and then I'll replace the capacitor after. So some mistakes were made here looking back at the footage. I should have actually clipped the desoldering braid, the used up portion, just so I can be able to work a little easier. Now not only that, the soldering iron I'm using, I'm using a new handle for it. So it's a little bit smaller than my old handle, so I'm still getting used to it. Now this capacitor is stubborn here. The solder is so old that it's not flowing right. I could have just pulled out my desoldering gun and got this out one, two, three, but I figured that was a little bit much for just two pins. So I eventually start just heating up both pins and yank at it till it breaks free. Now keep in mind when you pull at something like this you risk lifting up a trace. So that's just a little thing to note. Now that actually took longer than it should have. Sometimes the simplest things are the worst obstacles. So here's the new capacitor, it's the same spec. So keep in mind the negative and positive lead. Um, the stripe on the capacitor is the negative lead. You wanna put that to the negative side and you're done. You clip these legs and that's it. So now I'm going to follow up these pins with some Brasso just to polish these up a little bit. And of course, when you use Brasso, it tends to leave a white residue. So you always want to follow it up with some alcohol just to get rid of the residue. So after all that, I still get a garbled up image. Um, I'm making progress on this cart. What I noticed is that the cartridge is moving around inside. The PCB board is moving around inside the cartridge because it's missing those two posts. So I'm going to glue back those posts with some super glue and try it like that. So I let it dry for about 20 minutes and these posts seem to be rock solid now. So I'm gonna reassemble it and try it out.
So now after cleaning it up and reassembling it, now I'm getting a red screen. So um, my, it, I suspect that my work unit here, my uh, test bench here is getting dirty. So I'm going to clean it up because I eventually after wiggling it around, finding the right position, it's starting to work again. Now, as always, the horizontal lines you see there, that's just for my power brick that I use on my workbench. But I can assure you that this cartridge is working 100% fine. So if this video helped you out in any way or if you like this video in any way, please consider giving it a like and subscribe if you want to see more content like this.